the world's most valuable digital currency, Bitcoin, went through another halving over the weekend. It saw its daily supply of newly minted coins cut by 50%. And so what is halving? Well, to better understand how this works, it's important to know that Bitcoin has a finite supply of 21 million. That is a hard cap that is embedded into the cryptocurrency's code. And that limit was established to preserve the value of the tokens and to make them non-inflationary. And halving is meant to slow the supply of coins as it approaches that ceiling. Now, the way they drive this digital scarcity is by reducing the rewards for Bitcoin miners. And new Bitcoins are released through the process of mining. So imagine miners has a net, as a network of validators that verify all Bitcoin transactions in a blockchain. And for that, they are rewarded mostly in the form of newly minted coins. And that serves as incentive, so they keep adding blocks of Bitcoin transactions. Now, the halving aims to reduce this reward, making mining less profitable and eventually slowing down the production of new coins. So when Bitcoin was first mined in 2009, mining one block would earn 50 Bitcoins. The intentional slowing of supply revisits the crypto ecosystem every four years or after every 210,000 blocks are mined. And so on the first halving in 2012, the payout for mining a new block was halved to 25 Bitcoins. Now, 2016 and 2020 saw that reward cut to 6.25 Bitcoins. Uh, fast forward to this year, and now we are in the midst of the fourth halving where mining rewards have dropped to 3.125 Bitcoins. Uh, historically, the event has caused Bitcoin's price to soar. The previous three halvings have come before every bull run where the coin touches fresh all time highs. And investors are now bracing for another potential rally. Overnight prices have dipped nearly 1%. A year to date, Bitcoin prices have already skyrocketed by nearly 53%. A part of that is driven by record inflows into new spot ETFs, a part due to the potential upside from the halving. And let's bring in Omid Malakan now, adjunct professor at Columbia Business School, to talk more about this Bitcoin halving. Well, this is a fourth round of Bitcoin halving, and it, as we talked about, sees you know the rewards being earned by miners cut to 3.125 bitcoins. Now, it's gotten more expensive to put bitcoins into circulation. So, what does this mean for miners? Well, normally the halvings mean that minor revenues fall almost in half. Bitcoin miners have two sources of revenues. One is the uh, inflation, the new coins that are created to reward them, which in your uh, graphic uh, were displayed started out as 50. We're now, as of this halving, down to a uh, little over three. Bitcoin miners also make revenues from transaction fees, but historically, the vast majority of their revenues come from inflation, from the new coins, uh, which means that this is a significant hit to their revenues while their costs will remain high. Hmm. Now, what does this mean for investors? I think the big question is how the halving will impact prices. Uh, in fact, it had already been pretty volatile in the lead up to the halving event right from the highs we saw in March, thanks to that spot Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, but some analysts say that they had already priced in the halving. Yeah, the interesting thing about these events is because they are hard-coded into the software that runs Bitcoin, We've known this was coming, arguably, from when Bitcoin was first launched um, 15 years ago. And to the extent that markets are a discounting mechanism, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, in the early years, the halvings served as sort of a great uh, PR moment for Bitcoin because the cryptocurrency was not watched by the mainstream nearly as much as it is today. But whenever there was a halving, it would get mentioned in business publications and the mainstream media. But now that Bitcoin is a lot more widely accessible and followed, uh, it's not even that. Uh, so to answer the question of what does it mean, 
I'm not sure. You did mention that previously halvings have led to significant rallies. Uh, the last one was actually shortly after the COVID crash in all asset prices, including Bitcoin. But what is very unique about this halving is that we had a major rally in front of it. In fact, Bitcoin made a new all-time high not that long ago. So there's an interesting debate as to how much of all of this is priced in and whether it even matters. Mm. Let's talk about how Bitcoin you know, could perform in the face of those higher uh, for longer interest rate environment as well as uh, the geopolitical uncertainty, uh, you know, uh, looking at it from a more of a long term uh, perspective. So there are two ways to think about Bitcoin. Uh, one is the way most people think of it, which is a store of value akin to digital gold, something that could be a good hedge from inflation uh, because of its limited supply. But it's important to remember that Bitcoin is also the currency of a decentralized network for payments and value transfers. Uh, and how the price behaves is a combination of investors' expectations of the benefit of both. So certainly, if interest rates are higher for longer, um, and if the perception is that central banks are going to remain vigilant to fight inflation, then the store of value benefit of Bitcoin is, well, the appeal of it is diminished. On the other hand, as geopolitical tensions rise and there are fears of more conflict, possibly more economic sanctions, then the other aspect of Bitcoin, which is an alternative transfer mechanism, might actually become more appealing. Mm. I mean, we're just going back to the point on on what this means for miners. And so, you know, you're, so you're talking about miners' profits being halved. Our revenues will definitely take a hit. Um, this event, you know, uh, is it possible to lead to more consolidation in the space as, you know, uh, as, you, as you talked about, you know, the revenues being hit? Yes. Ordinarily, what we expect to happen after a halving is that Miners that are in a tougher economic situation and have a higher cost of production have a harder time leaving their machines running because they might literally not be making enough money to pay their bills, leading to consolidation that should benefit stronger miners. But the other interesting thing that's happened in this having it hasn't gotten a lot of attention, is that in the past year, uh, developers have come up with alternative uses of the Bitcoin blockchain for things other than holding and moving Bitcoin. These include NFTs or non-fungible tokens. They even include other kinds of tokens um, that could possibly be stable coins, securities, whatever people do with tokens. As your viewers probably know, other blockchains like Ethereum have always had that functionality. Bitcoin did not, but people have figured out how to introduce NFTs and other kinds of fungible tokens onto the Bitcoin blockchain. But to use any of that, users have to pay Bitcoin in transaction fees. So actually, the irony of the past couple of days since the halving is that while the inflation rate has gone down, the transaction fees on Bitcoin have skyrocketed, in part because certain new upgrades were also introduced to allow this extra kind of activity on chain. So the question now is, will these new features of Bitcoin create enough additional revenues for miners in a way that could possibly offset uh, the reduction of Bitcoins that are being paid as part of the protocol's inflation. All right, Omid, I really appreciate your time this morning. Omid Malikan, the adjunct professor at uh, Columbia uh, Business School.